Oh. So Lucas, a uh, little bit different for today's video. Yeah. Um, we've completed the game. We have. Folk, folks at home, the game is completed, so don't bother giving us any big tips or hints. We're done. I know that probably the episode going out around the same time as this one is like halfway through the game. Trust me, we are done. Uh, but as promised, we will be going through the bestiary, which is written from Atreus's point of view. Because mm -hmm. there's some interesting little tidbits in there. I thought, you know, it'll make a good just bonus episode of content for people. Just screw it. Like, let's take in some lore car. Also, as well, yeah, I unequipped all of our endgame armor so people don't go, oh, is that the endgame moveset using? I recommend using this. Because, again, <laughs> we've already completed the game. And it was super fucking easy, wasn't it, with my endgame moveset? Uh, yeah, it really was. Apart from the time you tried to style on Boulder in level one armor. And then he insta-killed you in one punch, but whatever. <laughs> yeah. what, what? Right, goodbye, Axe. We don't need you anymore. Because you know what? Pause. Codec. Uh, uh. Right. So, like, Lucas, how much did you go through this bestiary? Uh, very little. Oh, there's, there's actually a lot of cool shit in here. Also, because fuck it. Ah! We recorded this at, like, 9 o'clock at night, so I'm getting a beer. Fuck it. Screw it. Let's do it. Ah, because this is, uh, people who never went through it, like Lucas, it's written from the perspective of a trace, and this is the little journal you see him jotting things down in mm -hmm. on occasion. When you go and get, like, law markers, he writes in them, and, he, um, and every enemy you encounter, you get a description of it, from Atreus' point of view, which I think is kind of interesting. Yeah. That you are getting the point of view of Atreus. So without further ado, let's go through a bit of this, shall we? So Draugr. Mother said that Draugr were warriors who died, but their souls were too stubborn and angry to stop fighting. They'd fight off the Valkyrie that came to collect them and bring their own <laughs> dead bodies back to life. Norse mythology is fucking metal. Yeah. The base enemy you fight throughout the game is the soul of a warrior who was so literally too angry to die. That's so cool. And as you say, they are just basic bitch enemies of the game. And it's like, no, they fought off Valkyries trying to claim their souls. And you know what? I can believe that when you fight the level 8 ones in the next playthrough. And then we've got <laughs> Draugr with two weapons. So a Draugr with two weapons. Twice as dangerous, right? When they're with a more defensive enemy, we should consider taking down these dual wielding Draugr early in the fight and not turn our backs on them. And a mistrick here is not having Atreus read this out. Yeah, yeah. I would have loved, do you like the Mass Effect Codex where they have that mm. really cool voice actor just read out all the lore for the base racers? Can't be topped. It can't be topped, no. And I, I wish they had, like, Atreus reading this. It'd be kind of neat. Anyway, so Draugr explosives. I'm not sure how they do it, but these Draugr store energy in their bodies and explode on contact. Yeah, fuck that enemy type. <laughs> and then you have here some, some theorizing from Atreus. I wonder if it feels good to them. Anyway, we should attack them from a distance. And you even get little hints from Atreus, and then when you beat them, you get those bonus tips at the bottom that aren't written from Atreus' perspective. It's just gameplay hints. Oh, they are written from Atreus' perspective. They are still written from his perspective, but... Even the tips. Not so much... Um, it's not one of those just, oh, I wonder what this enemy is like. It's, no, just do this against them. And I think that appears if you do it against the enemy. Yeah, I, uh, from what I can tell, that looks like two little unlockable nodes, maybe, of yeah. like... When you fight them enough or when you do the right thing, it goes in the codex. Yeah, and the game that's done that best is Devil May Cry 1, where every enemy has... A, there's a best theory like this, and every enemy in it has eight entries, and you can't mm. unlock all the entries until you've tried every combat style against them. Oh. And you get little like hints on how to do it. And like, uh, for example, Phantom, the big um, lava spider, you fight in that. There's like eight different ways you can damage him. Oh, okay. And they talk about how if you if you think to stand on top of Phantom and shoot him in the back, it says only a true devil hunter would try a tactic so brazen, but it is known to work. Oh, that's so cool. you are rewarded with extra tidbits of lore for trying different ways of fighting enemies. And not so much in God of War, it's just swing your axe and kill it. And I think that's a mistrick, though, in um, Pokemon games, because in the new ones, when you fight in, uh, like a, you know any Pokemon once, it reveals its type. And then it will tell you what moves are neutrally effective, not very effective, mm. super effective. I think it would have been a lot cooler if you had to catch the Pokemon and get them in your Pokedex to do or, that. Yeah, or try moves against it and you learn it over time. Exactly, yeah. And I think it's a real mystery because there's no reason to catch Pokemon unless you intend to use them yeah, or complete it's... the Pokedex. Right, and that would necessitate a change in gameplay of making it much harder to catch Pokemon, making Pokemon much rarer. Hmm. 
But anyway, we continue. Drag with power right. weapons. We won't go through all of these. We'll like maybe skip a couple. But I think just the drow go quite interesting. It's the base enemy type. Yeah. Because if the undead trying to kill us with sharp objects wasn't bad enough, some draugr can channel energy through their arms, charging their weapons and making them even more dangerous. Getting hit with a rusty sword hurts. We're getting hit with a fire charged sword. Hurts worse. Tell me about it. Draugr <laughs> projectiles. Fuck these guys. These draugr can shoot Correct. fireballs. How do they do that? They like to attack from a distance, which can be really annoying when we find a bunch of enemies. Also, they can attack you from off screen. Luckily, they do go down pretty quickly, though. They I'll do give this. them that. Um, Draugr with shields. I already knew that Draugr weren't just mindless monsters, but I didn't think they were smart enough to use a shield. Like, all creatures with basic sentience can, like, you know, they enact self preservation. Also, they use swords and projectiles. Yeah, a shield's not exactly. Like, if you can use a projectile, you can use a sword. Uh, yeah. uh, a shield. Draugr, speed. What's more terrifying than a Draugr? A Draugr that can run at you really fast. <laughs> I like that. It shoots fire out of their legs to move around quickly. We'll need to be on our toes. Heavy Draugr. These are the fun ones. These Draugr are bigger than the ones we first encounter. They carry heavier, more dangerous weapons. It makes them slower, but they're a lot stronger than the regular ones. And, and something get... that I, I just noticed then, that I kind of did already notice, but it's just made this very apparent of, there aren't really female enemies. No, except for the Valkyries. Yeah. But the Valkyries are like the most badass enemies in the game, so it makes sense. Fire That's engine. True. I like this one. I could feel the heat off this one from the boat. I guess now we know what happens to all those broken ships. So I think I... <laughs> That's like the first one we encounter. Yeah. So this is in, um, obviously, in uh, alphabetical order. I don't think it's in order of when you encounter them. Ah, oh, right, okay. Yeah. Fire nightmare. These nightmares shoot fireballs. So we've not even established what a nightmare is. No. But this is one that shoots fireballs. The forest ancient. So we ran into an ancient of the forest on our way to Fafnir's storeroom. This one was walking around instead of just hiding it like most of them do. Maybe we woke it up a little while we were trying to get inside. These ancients are kind of beautiful. I wish their hearts were so valuable. Oh, God. Uh, spoilers for folks who are watching this when it's released. We don't use any of those ancient hearts. We killed them because they were experienced. And look how much experience points you have, Carl. Oh, yeah, I, I, I did some grinding off screen later in the game. Don't worry, folks. Yeah, I can tell you finished the game when you got 77,000 experience. Left. Don't worry about it, folks. Frost Ancient. So we ran into a Frost Ancient on our way up the mountain before this journey. I thought all ancients are made of fire and rock, but I guess it's just the rock part they all share. This one must have originally been part of the mountain itself. I bet it got tired of being a mountain and one day just got up and walked away. I love that. That'd be awesome. Like, we talked about how, like, I think we compared it to the uh, Pokedex. Yeah, uh, this is written from Atreus's point of view. So this is like a child's wisdom. Of, mm -hmm. Oh, maybe part of the mountain just got up and walked away. And that sounds stupid, but look at what else lives in this world. I don't question that that would happen in this world. I, fucking well, I like the, the idea that the mountain just got bored. Ice Ancient. <laughs> An ancient in the ice and snow. I wonder if they have thoughts like we do. I can't hear any. They don't have mouths or ears. None that I can see anyway. They're mostly pretty peaceful unless we attack first. I'd never say this to father. I wish we could just leave them alone. So do I. <laughs> but there was that one in the late with the game where just Atreus kicks it. Yeah. And I, I love that he just kicks it. Um, the lava ancient. This ancient has been underwater for a long time. How does it keep its fire? Why didn't it seek higher ground? Well, high ground is like, you know, it wins all battles. Maybe it goes into a kind of hibernation when it's underwater. And I really like the Ancient as a subtype of enemy. Mm -hmm. Not sure about you. Like when you figure out how to kill them, they're actually really fun. Well, I didn't realise that you could use um, relic attacks on them while they were stunned. Yeah, and you can kill them in like 12 seconds. I did a stream um, and I killed one before Atreus had even finished talking about it. Like It was already <laughs> dead before Atreus a sentence about it being an Ancient. We should watch out was finished. The Soul Eater. They look almost exactly like ancients, but there's something off about them. Mum always called them Soul Eaters. Dangerous abominations. And she never said a bad word about any living creature, even poisonous bugs. So her saying that always stuck with me. I wish I could tell her father and I killed one. We killed like three. They are a base enemy type. Oh no, Soul Devourer, sorry. It's stronger than a regular Soul Eater. And even though still terrifying. So these are the things that they just bring back in Musselfine. Ah, okay. Yeah, there's, they, this is just a base enemy there. It's like I've killed like 20 of those grinding out <laughs> um, experience. The Stone Ancient. One of the ancients. I can't believe it. Did Mum know they were still alive? Well, they are well ancient. Suppose they're part of Ymir himself. They've been around since the beginning of time. So I think that's the first one you fight. Yeah. The first one. Because the stone one, isn't it? It doesn't have an element associated with it. But my, I, I like the ancients. I think the ancients are kind of cool. The ancients are cool enemies, yeah. And like the... Um, side quest you have where you find out the dwarves were using them as beasts of burden 
because they're basically just hunks of rock that can lift several tons and they never complain or tire. Oh, shit, yeah. yeah. And that's what a soul eater becomes. Then we have the cedar enemies. Um, like, do you care about any of these? Um, so we went through all that, the cool stuff. Oh, I, you know what I give a shit about? I give a shit about the revenants. Because fuck that enemy type. Other than that, I'd maybe say the Traveller. I'd want to read about a Traveller. I do, yeah. So we have uh, the Reavers. They're just normal human Reavers. So they're just corrupted mm -hmm. by magic. The Revenant. Fuck the Revenant, man. <laughs> they're so annoying. Mother wants to know that some witches trade little bits of their soul here and there to become more powerful in uh, Seor magic. Eventually, they'll lose every part of their humanity and become Revenants. They can disappear in an instant. These particular ones are able to spread poison through touch and breath. Fuck that enemy type. Yep, fuck them. Worst fuck enemy them. type in the game. Because the, all they do is teleport away. Now, I don't know what um, C-Deer magic is, do you? Uh, I I think that, it's just the magic of the realm. Know. Yeah, I don't know what this cedar type enemy is. Like we have this here, Legion. Uh, Legion, and it's what um, Freya summons in the final battle spoilers. So I'm guessing oh, right. it's to do with like um, earth and magic or something like that. Maybe, yeah. The Shadow. So these were human reavers, but now they embrace the ways of sea magic. They throw a magic spell. So they're, they're like the Shadow ones you fight. Mm -hmm. and you have, yeah! These are the fucking OGs. I love these guys. Oh my God. They wear really strong armor. Have huge swords, one of the toughest enemies we've faced. Who are they and what do they want with us? Mum never mentioned the Travelers. I hope we don't have to fight too many of them. We killed them all. <laughs> they're all they are all dead. And then the Traveler Champion. Oh, this these is the, the one ones. Some, yeah, the ones that are completely invincible. Uh, game designers do you know what's really fun in character action games completely invincible enemies yeah that um, negate every attack you do even if you're attacking a different enemy and, and the they Vikings. like stun you a bit when you hit them accidentally and shit like, yeah then we have the Vikings which is just the guys that heal oh yeah yeah which is no fun then beasts yeah Fafnir Fafnir was a dwarf this is the cool stuff um, according to Mimir he was very greedy and his greed turned him into a dragon it sounds ridiculous but I saw him with my own eyes he was a dragon. I wonder if it's painful to turn from a dwarf to a dragon. How long did it take? I have a bunch of questions, but he flew away before I could ask any. I love that. <laughs> that Atreus wanted to talk to the dragon. Fair enough. I'd want to talk to a dragon. And we know that Atreus can. He has that ability. And then, Lucas, you want to have a crack at pronouncing this one? Chrysler? I'm Just... not sure. I've butchered that to hell. You know what? I, Death... I do not know. Death Metal Band Name Number 3. I can't believe it. Father just killed a dragon. So that's the canonical first dragon you kill. Oh, I've never seen one. him. I've never seen him fight like that before. I mean, I know he's really strong, but this thing was huge. The dragon's name was Death Metal Album Name, which is sort of like <laughs> the word for terror. It's an appropriate name too. He's vicious, ugly, and shoots lightning out of his face. Luckily, Father was able to find some Yggdrasil tree sap that he used to stun the dragon. He then stabbed a big crystal into his throat. It was a big explosion, and down went the dragon. I like that. Father doesn't even seem phased. Does he ever get scared? <laughs> no. He's a Spartan. Spartans don't show fear. It's just, this was fucking terrifying and exciting as fuck. And Father was just like, yeah, can we move it, on? He even says it was in my way, doesn't he? When he asked, oh, you killed the dragon? It was merely in my way. Yeah. Until, like, uh, Mimi, oh no, Sindri's like, you deserve a reward. A reward? <laughs> I like this one, Fierce Ogre. This ogre is similar in size to regular ones, but they ran out of budget, so they just reskinned it. <laughs> Basically, it is, isn't it? The, the, yeah, yeah. It looks, folks at home, it looks like we've got a lot of enemies here. You'll notice that most of them are just reskins or enemies with different weapons or, um, uh, like, the well, Ancients are a fun enemy type, but they all fight in exactly the same way and just have a different colour to them. What, there's, like, three, four different types of enemies in that top list of, mm -hmm. like, 20 things? There's actually three, four enemies with different elements attached. So there's another dragon. Um, told me a story about Ota. He was a dwarf who turned into an otter. Is how he got his name. Is this the same otter? How did he become a dragon? And that's father, but I know he doesn't care. <laughs> that's when I miss mother most. Oh, Is this why I, like I have this... questions and dad just tells me to shut up. This is why I like the best, you know, you get a glimpse into Atreus' character that's really neat. Mm. And they put a lot of effort into this. Like, it's like, he misses his mum. And this is he why does. you see him hiding his little journal. Oh, God, because he's I'm... embarrassed to say stuff like this in front of his father. Oh, Lucas, yeah, poison wolf. <laughs> Look at that drawing. I'd have that as a tattoo. That's sick. And that's the thing is, I think at the start of the game, Atreus does kind of try and quickly realises, oh, Kratos just does not want to talk to me. He also doesn't care about anything in this world. If it's in his way, he'll kill it. That's about the extent of his, uh, um, uh, uh, how much he gives a shit. Mm -hmm. 
I oh, like this though. This is, um, they spit out some kind of poison that we should avoid walking in, and they're even more aggressive than rabid ones. I bet we're doing them a favour by putting them out of their misery. And then we have like, the regular rabid wolves. Yeah. I've always admired wolves, but with the ones we've encountered, attackers on sight, which means they're probably rabid. I guess to them, we are food. It's kill or kill, be killed. But they are beautiful in their own way, and killing them makes me a little sad. Good thing father won't read this. Well. <laughs> with the joint son, he's not only reading it, he's streaming it. <laughs> But I love that as well. If you look, the picture, he just traced his own drawing and put um, poison in it. You know what? He learned to reskin enemies as well, Carl. Yeah, even Atreus is on it. The Regin. Um, Regin was the captured dwarf king and forced to act as essentially of Conan's guard. He's not very good at it. There are monsters everywhere. <laughs> 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 there was a lot of enemies in that place. Uh, the Tassel Worm. Like, fuck the Tassel Worm. That drawing's awesome, though. It is a cool drawing. Uh, part lizard, part cat, or lizard cat, or a cat lizard, or something. Cat. Cat is a, is a poet, I didn't know it. Either way, it's a combination, <laughs> pretty weird. That's a burrow underground and close the distance. And we've got the cursed tassel worm. Um, it doesn't have a poisonous bar, but it barfs poison. Oh, God. The wolver, they look like wolves, but they stand all right like humans. They're a lot smarter, stronger, and faster. Their fur is so dense, it makes them tough to put down. They remind me a little of those berserkers that father put down last summer, but wolves instead of bears. <laughs> so that so means casually just, just talking about the burrs that dad fought last summer yeah um just last summer a bunch of berserker bears invaded the forest that they live in and just kratos killed them off camera with no effort <laughs> then we've got the fierce wolvers the reskinned wolvers what do like the actual change here it is literally the same drawing yeah nothing okay. looks different to me the Hellbrood and the Hell Reaver. Do you like care about any of these? Because they're all just the same thing. It's like, oh, they all came back. They are, yeah. Alright, so the elves, the fucking dark elves, man. Oh god. Fuck the dark elves. Again, cool drawing though. Uh, unlike the light elves of Alpine, the dark elves prefer dark places. Maybe that's where they want to cover up the light. They can fly and seem pretty smart and well coordinated. More so than most of the enemies we've taught fought so far. Then we've got the Dark Elf Lord. Bigger, stronger, and faster than any dark elf. Also a fucking ball ache of a fight. <laughs> Speaking of a ball ache of a fight, Silvar. Do you know what? I don't even know how I typed that on my keyboard. No. Do you even know how to get half those characters on your keyboard, mate? No. <laughs> so we just killed the Dark Elf King that's been harassing us this whole time. I thought I'd feel good, but just before he died, he said the Light Elves were the bad guys. Could that be true? What if you've been fighting against the good guys the whole time? The Light Elves don't seem evil, but if they really were the ones who started this one, maybe the Dark Elves were just fighting back. So confusing. I guess I see why father didn't want to get involved, but I'm not going to tell him that. Don't tell your dad that he's right. That's what the first time we've seen Atreus actually acknowledge maybe the Dark Elves aren't evil because they're dark. No. Oh, so yeah, it is, yeah. And even Kratos says, like, we know nothing of their struggle. Yeah. So let's not get involved. He only does when they start attacking him. Then we've got the Dark Elf warrior, and then we've got the Light Elves. The Light Elves are back. We freed the Light of Alfheim from whatever the Dark Elves are trying to do to it, and they all return to the temple. Everything is beautiful in Alfheim, now the Light shines free. The Light Elves seem nice. They don't really say anything, but at least they are trying to kill us. Father says I shouldn't assume anything, but what does he know? He was doing who knows what inside the Light. Well, that's take down an entire swarm of Dark Elves. I don't care what he says, I'm glad we got involved. So you even get there where Atreus is like, no, fuck Dad. He left me alone to fight infinite Dark Elves for like a year. I mean, I'd be pretty pissed off at that, to be fair. I like these as well, friends. Oh, look how short this section is. And Vary. <laughs> so he wasn't very helpful at first, but something about seeing the dead Soul Eater in the land of mines, and he realised he was kind of a jerk. I think he feels guilty, because he, he is one of the dwarves which spent into the Ancients and accidentally created Soul Eaters. Glad I don't have to fight them anymore. He says that his uh, soul is still trapped in the ring, and Brock wanted to melt him down. He could be so mean. <laughs> uh, but I convinced Father to keep him, and now Father uses his soul as an enchantment sometimes. He doesn't complain too much, but I've gotten pretty good at ignoring him. <laughs> Fucking hell. Brock. I met this dwarf on our way to the mountain. He's a blacksmith, a famous blacksmith. He made a Leviathan axe, and he upgraded it for Father too. He's a little rude and grouchy, but I like him anyway. I hope we see him again. You see him so much. You see him a couple of times, mate. He's like, oh, there's one of the best characters in the game. Oh, yeah. He's so good. And the goddess Freya. The Witch of the Woods with the goddess Freya the whole time. Look at that. She looks like um, Ashoka from Clone Wars. <laughs> she's, she's, she looks like uh, what's what's that race called in Star Wars oh I've got no clue oh god it's going to piss me off that I don't remember what it is I wouldn't have a clue about the race name just google Ashoka right now because someone's in the comments going to yell at us oh god okay uh, is it Twi'leks is it the Twi'leks I, honestly I've got no clue 
Okay, because she's got like a little bit of Kit Fisto face going on as well. Ahsoka. See if it's Twi'leks. Or Twi'leks. Ahsoka Tarnit. Um. Species Togruta. Huh. Okay, got that wrong. My bad. Mamiya. We found this strange man trapped in a tree. His name is Mamiya. He calls himself the smartest man alive. Or he didn't until Father chops off his head. <laughs> that, do you know what? That's all we need to know. Yeah. Uh, oh god no uh, Morso Gignir um, the dwarf king one of the sons of Ivaldi ruled over humans uh, he was a good king and then he started having dreams about his people dying for some reason he thought forcing them to hunt deadly beasts was a way to save them captured three dragons to harvest their fury killed innocent people to harvest their screams and then was killed by those very same people and they returned as hell walkers that created the ultimate sacrifice we can use these ingredients to create some kind of legendary armour that I may or may not be wearing at the end of the game <laughs> and we've got Sindri Famous blacksmith, but his brother's really different. He doesn't like um, dirt and grime. Weird trait for a blacksmith. And the world serpent. I love how he considers the world serpent a friend. That's kind I mean, of adorable, he does help isn't us it? All. He meets this giant snake. He's like, will you be my friend, giant snake? <laughs> now, we just woke up the world serpent in Midgard. Father thought he was trying to eat us, but mother always said, Jormungandr was a friendly giant. He tried to speak to us, but I couldn't understand him. I wonder if that's the language all the giants speak. He doesn't seem very interested right now. I wish I could talk to him. I have so many questions. What does he eat? Where does he come from? What does he do all day? I think he just sleeps. Maybe, but I am a, I'm a bit annoyed that, for example, in the cases of like the friends, they don't get updated over time. As you learn more about them, yeah. like Some of them like, do. Oh, I wonder if we can find a way to talk to him after we've already beaten the game and found out Mamiya can have a chat with him. Yeah. Uh, maybe they'll fix that in the next one. Then we have maybe. Balder. Balder, one of the Acer, Odin's son, Thor's brother, came to a house and fought father. Father killed him. Or so we thought. Uh, you know what? No, he's not. Not anymore. <laughs> Magni. Look at that. You know that this is a shit tier character. Yeah. Where that's the, like, fucking bog standard Draugr number three <laughs> gets more play and push than Magni, son of Thor. And then Modi. He ran off after father killed his brother. I'll kill him next time I see him. Something tells me that you did. Yeah, <laughs> he did. And here are the cool ones. These are the ones that I wanted to do this entire thing for. So. Oh, cool. Brenner Daldi is the first troll we fight in the game. It's the second troll we've seen so far. I had no idea they're so close to our house. They never bothered us before, but I guess we'd never bother them either. Mother said if I ever saw a troll, I should run away. Guess she never said that to father. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think she ever needed to, did she? No. I think actually that's the second one you fight, and this is the first one. Ah, uh, yeah. They're not in order, damn it. No, they're not. So we found him trapped in a cage in Vito Guard. The Dwarf King managed to capture him somehow. Why was he in this cage? We could have let him drop down there, but even for a troll, that felt too cruel. Ah, because that's the one that we uh, we found trapped underground and Kratos. kill him in like three seconds. And then Atreus was like, well, I think he was um, happy with dying. In honour. Yeah. yeah. So here's the one that's near your house at the start of the game. It's his brother, apparently, not the same name. Uh, I think the troll we just thought was um, Dwaldar Kamopa. Mother used to tell me stories about him and try and scare me if I wandered off too far. I think she'd be proud of me, but father thinks I got a little too angry and I'm not ready. Mother told me stories about trolls. This one's name translates to Death Merchant. With a name like that, I think it's safe to assume he's pretty evil. I'm glad we killed him. And we killed this one trying to restore Jotunheim Tower when all the doors opened to muscle flying. I guess he wanted to see what was happening. Why is every troll's first instinct to attack? <laughs> yeah, he's all, he, just, he just like bumbles into doors like, hey, what's going on in this thread? And like, oh, God, no! Handed, like, he just walks in on like level nine Kratos with like four <laughs> runic attacks locked and ready to go. The Death Eater. Mother never mentioned this troll. Guess he never did anything special to earn an interesting bedtime story. And now he never will. But... He is like the Henry Cavill of the troll world. Yeah, look at him. He's ripped his all balls. <laughs> but the quote of, he's called Death Eater. I guess he never did anything special. And now he never will. That's fucking brutal, <laughs> line. <laughs> Grendel of the Frost. Uh, look at that. You can just tell they reuse the design. Like, they don't even change the drawing. No. And they even keep the same fucking logo on him. Grendel the Frost was a stuff of legend. Even Mother thought he was just a myth. He said that Grendel was the strongest, most feared among the Stone Troll tribe. They hold the name the Frost in the highest regard, knowing it's going to be honored and revered, and now he's dead. Serves him right. <laughs> Grendel of the Ashes. This is the other Grendel's brother, or maybe the Ashes are a different kind of title. There's not there's so much we don't know about trolls, but I guess the most important thing to know is that they're trying to kill us, so we have to kill them first. That's what Father would say anyway. No. I think it is. Ah. <sighs> So we have a yarn photo. Mother said this troll lived in the heart of the mountain with the giants, but there was a falling out one day and they cast him out. Makes sense to me. 
I wouldn't want to live with a troll. I guess he moved back in when they left. <laughs> and then we have Matiger Helsen. Matiger Helsen, known as Helheim's son and bridgekeeper. Apparently he was born and raised in hell. Growing up on a troll tribe can't be an easy life, but growing up in hell must be even worse. That's the hell gatekeeper. Yeah. And then finally, Lucas, are you ready for the only reason we're doing this? Oh, okay. The Stone Beard King. Mother said the Stone Beard King earned his title of king simply because no one could take it from him. If you are <laughs> arrogant enough to call yourself a king, you better be able to back it up, and Stone Beard could. He never lost a fight until now. <laughs> so that's the coolest fucking guy in all of this game because he just walked into a place and went, I'm the king. Fuck it. Anyone thinks they can step, step. And no one, and no one did. No one did until Kratos rocked up. And oh, that's yeah, awesome. that's, that's the best. Yet. And there's some interesting stuff in that. I really there like is. this. And then we've got all the lore, but no. That's you know what? Lore. Go find the YouTube video of Mamiya's Tales just all in a row and listen to this if you give a shit. But man, that bestio is pretty cool. It is, Stone yeah. Stone Beard King, what a ledge. That's some just... That's next level play, isn't it? Walking in, I'm the king. You've got to learn okay. that title. Okay, try and kill me and take it back. Uh... <laughs> oh, it's just, it's just not going to go well, is it? But... Son. Son. Oh, I actually meant to say then. What's um, up? You never showed me what Andrari sold us with all the items. Do you have all the items? I might have all the enchantments. Uh, but I need to fully upgrade that thing. And I don't think I have the resources to do it because I use them to upgrade other enchantments. Ah, uh, yeah. Do you use like Dragon's Tears and stuff like that? So yeah. I'm not sure I'll be able to, to be fair. But, let's just check. My like, son. Like, we're going to do the Vegeta and Trunks moment. I've never held you as my son. So stop going away. Love me. No. I've never <laughs> held you as my son, have I, boy? So, son. Son, accept your father's love. <laughs> He's, he's trying to juke and jive, man. His child's too strong. You've got to beat him to it, Carl. I do. I need, like, love me. Damn it! <laughs> son! I, I will love my son. I love my fucking son. Oh, no. Oh, no. Wrong runic right. attack. Luke, he doesn't want the hug. Damn it. I just murk him instead. Damn it! Yes, I'm teaching you love. <laughs> Back it, son. Wow! Oh, love me. I'm gonna do it, Lucas. We're we gonna hug our son. <laughs> We're gonna hug him. We're gonna hug our son. All right, so let's back up. Let's back up. No! Son. Son. Son, I love you. Ah, oh, god damn it! It's too much like a leap forward. You know what? Wait one sec. There we go. Let's do Lucas, let we do it, we're hugging our son. Do it. Where is it? Where's Nami and Crush? This is the Atre one. I love you, Atreus. Embrace. I've never embraced you as a, as, as a son until today. <laughs> Hug me! Just make him happy. <laughs> oh, Lucas. memories. Lucas, precious, precious memories. <laughs> <laughs> They've had such a good life. It's been a long journey, Lucas. Atreus needs this. And most of all, Kratos needs this. <laughs>